Yeah, we use reishi very frequently when baking, but by no means do we use it in everything, because as you've noticed, the flavor is pretty bitter, and so you have to be very selective about where you use it and what other flavors you combine it with. And with reishi, the bitter components in there are the most beneficial components within reishi. So you definitely don't want to just go looking for a reishi that's not bitter. You can certainly find that. You can find a, you know, U.S. grown, certified organic reishi grown on grain that is not going to really do you much good. It's not going to have any bitter flavor to it, but it's also not going to be very beneficial. And primarily what you're getting in a product like that is going to be a lot of grain powder and you have a little bit of a mycelium in there from the reishi, but it's definitely not worth your money at all. So with a bitter reishi, you want to be selective, as I said, about how you use it. So that's going to mean mixing it in with other flavors that combine well with the bitter flavor of reishi. And so this is going to be things like chocolate or coffee flavors. So if you're making brownies, great time to use reishi. If you're making like a vanilla cake, for example, not a great time to use reishi. When you're dealing with more delicate flavors like this, you have to use herbs that have more, more gentle flavors to them. So that would be a great opportunity, for example, to use something like astragalus or lion's mane or tremella mushroom. So there is a time and place for every single herb, and it doesn't mean you have to put reishi into everything, but it's a great idea to find a way, somehow, to incorporate reishi as often as possible. <laughs> 